if you have pencil and um, and paper with you, you can kind of follow along. Uh, what you'll want to do is, uh, and for the first part, I'll, I'll I'll tell you and I'll show you as I do this. Uh, you'll want to use, you know, very light pencil, so you don't 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 draw too hard. You want to be able to like erase that out or or have that not so visible. And then afterwards, in the, the next stage, I'll show where we can kind of add more heavier lines to show because that'll be the final bit. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go to the share here and let me go to this I've set up. And okay, so can you guys see now the white background? Yes. Yes. Okay, excellent. So this is kind of my digital canvas. This is where this is like how I work um, in Photoshop. And you can whoops, this is upside down. Turn my tablet upside down, it kind of matters. Okay, so you can you can see the, the cursor as well, probably. Uh, I'm going to select on the left side. I've got a, a bunch of tools. I'm going to select the, the paintbrush, and let me just move this over a little bit. Okay, and I'm just going to make a new layer here. This is different from working with paper a little bit, <laughs> uh, and then make sure it's working. Okay, so it's working. Good. Let me just go back, make sure this is working. Okay, good, now we've got a nice line. Okay, so uh, we are going to draw a Tyrannosaur from the side in this case. Uh, this, is, this is useful, it, it looks a little simple at first, but it, it's useful because this is a lot of kind of how, sort of how we do it as, as artists when we're doing it professionally as well to some extent. So the first thing you want to do, and I'm going to, I'm going to actually show this to you at sort of, um, I'm going to reduce the intensity of my line so it looks like this kind of gray. Now, what I want you to do is for this gray stuff, whenever I draw in gray, can you still see that? Yeah, okay. Um, when I draw in gray, that means make it relatively light lines. Don't draw too heavy. Um, and then when I draw in black like this, um, you can tell the difference between this, those two lines there. It's visible on your end too? Yep, yeah. yep. Uh, good. When there's black like that, that means put more weight into it, make the line heavier or darker. Okay. So here we go. We'll start with the gray line, and I'm just going to... Uh, good. Sorry. There we go. Okay. So starting now, okay, sort of to the middle of your page, but a little bit, a little bit more to the right than middle, um, draw a, a circle, pretty much the middle, a circle about this big. And again, this is light, right? So not too heavy. And then draw another circle, a little smaller to its right pretty much right next to it. A little smaller, but not too much smaller. Okay. Like that. Kind of like a snowman part, <laughs> I guess. A snowman belly and, 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 and chest. Okay. Now, on this snowman, we're gonna have a, a kind of a head too, but its head is kind of tilted off to the side. So it's a, it's, it's a smaller circle still, but it's up here. So yeah, we got this snowman with its twisted head like that. <laughs> Now we're going to add another circle of this snowman. <laughs> this is a mutant snowman. And this circle is going to be off to the side of this other circle and slightly bigger and more egg-shaped. Okay, so I'm just going to move my page over a little. A little bit more egg-shaped and the egg hangs off here and kind of droops a little bit like that. Okay. Like that. So we've got a, a four, four snowball made snowman with an egg in the end. Now in the big circle, we're going to make another egg. This one is kind of the full length of the circle. I guess it's kind of like an eye almost, <laughs> I could imagine. Sort of a little bit slanted egg kind of thing. There's another egg. This is like... 
dinosaurs laid lots of eggs. So think of these as dinosaur eggs. Those, those round ones, those really round ones are like duckbill eggs. Duckbills and some sauropods laid these very round eggs a lot of the time. And so when scientists find these, that's often a key that maybe we're talking about those kinds of dinosaurs. These long eggs, these long narrow ones were something that you often find with some of the small predators like uh, uh, the, um, the, the velociraptor relatives, for example. Okay, so we're gonna add another sort of velociraptor-like egg here. This is gonna be slanted in the other direction and it's coming off that other egg and it's kind of long and skinny. Okay, so there's kind of a velociraptor-like egg. And then one more, smaller velociraptor-like egg hanging off that one, again, in the opposite direction, like that. Okay. Okay. Now, we're gonna add a little circle. Uh, see the second circle we made, that second, small, second largest one? Down at about the five o'clock position on the inside, just a little small circle like this. Okay, and I'm gonna add one more Velociraptor-like egg. I promise it's the last one. At the very bottom of that last Velociraptor egg, at the very bottom there, and this one is gonna be horizontal, right across the bottom, and it's, it's small, smaller than the others. Like that, and it's kind of skinny. Okay. One more piece for this base. And you, you can probably see where we're going with this, I and mean, it's, it, it, it's probably gonna be pretty obvious, but we're gonna add sort of a, kind of like a, a twisted pool noodle or, or, or like a banana that's seen better days. Um, like this. Okay, it's like, it's like a banana that's been twisted halfway around in the middle. <laughs> it's bending in both directions, okay. That's the base. And so a lot of the time as paleo artists, we will draw these simple shapes to help us to imagine where the different parts of the animal will be, to plan it out. Because it's hard to draw the final, the final lines without knowing where everything should go. It's easier to see it as a whole. This is a guide for us. Now what you're gonna wanna do is maybe on your end, you could kind of just lightly erase out part of that whole thing. Or just if you've made it light enough, just leave it like that. We're gonna add another layer onto this. Now we're gonna go heavier. So you're gonna take your pencil and add more weight with this next part. And so I'm gonna show this again with the black lines. So we're gonna connect parts of these circles on the outside and, and various parts into sort of a single outline. And that's where we're gonna to start to see the an actual animals start to emerge from this. So go back to the, the very top of that big first circle you made. And we're gonna move in the direction of that next circle. And we're going to use these, these parts where the circles kind of bulge out the most to be the parts where we're gonna connect them with these bridges of lines. So I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna to go toward that other one and stop there for now. But now I'm gonna continue further up toward that second circle, kind of a twist of snowman's head, that. And then continue this line up to the top of that last sort of egg. Stop there. This is kind of the back of the neck, the nape of the neck of the Tyrannosaurus. Tyrannosaurus had this enormous muscles in its upper part of its neck here. It had these, this enormous head. And so these muscles had to be very large to be able to hold up that neck and to be able to move it around. But this egg here is going to represent kind of the head of the animal. I'm going to move my page over a little bit. And over here is the snout. We're going to extend this line a little beyond the end of our egg in this sort of a little bit of a boxy shaped end like that. And then right at the top here, near the very tip of the top end of the egg, there's kind of a little bit of a, a bump. Whoops, that's a little bit bigger than I expected. That's right, I'll do that. A bit of a bump. That. They had these, they had these kind of ornaments on their head above their eyes. There was one pair of sort of like almost like little little shelves uh, that are right in front of the eyes, not very big. And then above the eyes, there were these great 
big kind of bony bosses they're called, like a big bulge of bone. And so that is going to be, so this is the little shelf. And then behind its eye, there's this big boss of bone, it's called, kind of like, almost like an egg in shape, actually. We're going back to eggs again. So this kind of thing sits on top of its head like that. Now we're going to connect that, that front little, little knob with the front of the snout, basically kind of like this. And, and Tyrannosaurus had these bumpy skulls on the front. They were like lots of little bumps on their nose. So you can actually add a little bit of bumpiness to the top of that snout. Not too much, a little bit. They had a lot of like hard, um, almost like fingernail type of stuff on their head. And it, and it, it, it kind of made their heads, oops, I made too much there. Uh, made their head kind of this bumpy kind of thing. Okay. Okay, so the other thing is now underneath the head, yeah, down here, under the, this, this boss of bone, at the very bottom of the jaw, we're going to go to the bottom of the jaw, they had these enormous muscles at the base of the jaw. And those were the muscles that helped it to crush with its mouth and crush through bone. And they wrapped around from the inside of the, of the skull and wrapped around the jaw and attached to the, uh, to the outside. Uh, at the base of the jaws, and they made this kind of bump of, of muscle back here. There's a bump of muscle, and then the bones also kind of were bulging, and so it has this bit of a bulge at the back of its jaw. It has kind of a, a small and narrow snout, and then a big bulge at the back. So this, they had this weird head like that. We're going to add the eye. The eye is going to be just below this little knob at the front and the top, and and just in front of this big bony boss and not too far down. So right around here. And it's small, it's not very large. Most of it is head, small amount of it was eye. Small hole for the eye and these guys were huge animals. And the bigger the animal, usually this kind of the smaller the eye and this was a big animal, bigger than elephant. The mouth will start at the, at the tip of the snout but slightly down from the tip, so like right around there. And then, it connects up to like under the eye, about halfway down. You can put a little dot there. And then uh, the mouth would have gone a little further back. It would end around here maybe. And then notice the way it will curve. So it kind of comes like this, connects those two points, and then goes a little bit up and then down and curves into the front. So it, it has this little bit of a curved jawline and it had enormous teeth. Now, paleontologists are still kind of discussing whether or not it had any kind of soft, fleshy uh, tissue over its teeth, cover the teeth, or the teeth were fully exposed. Because Tyrannosaurs had teeth, upper teeth, that hung over top of the lower teeth and on the outside. So if this is the, the upper jaw, the edge of the upper jaw and the teeth stuck out like this, and the lower jaw came up like this, the lower jaw, when you were looking at it from the outside, would kind of a little bit slide inside of the upper jaw when it was closed, or at least the lower teeth would sit inside of the jaw and the upper teeth would hang outside of the lower teeth. They would kind of, inter, not interlock, but in a sense they would interlock where the, the top would kind of umbrella over the bottom ones. And this way they could crush and break bones between these two. If you looked at its snout and cross section, this is what would happen. The upper teeth would go around the outer teeth and it could kind of, any bone that got in between them would be kind of snap like that. So we're gonna put a few t tips of teeth here anyway, visible from the outside, because these things had long, the size of a banana, each of these teeth basically, a big banana. Uh, this thing had huge teeth and about the same shape too. Okay, so there are some sticking out there. Now the neck here will connect and we're gonna use this, this little um, circle to kind of help us draw the edge of the neck coming like that. Down here, this, this sort of in-between big circle, that's the chest. That's where the ribs would come together and it had the, the shoulder blades uh, that come around uh, and, and, and the, the collar bones. So the shoulder blades on the side and the collarbones came to the front and made kind of a chest. And we'll use that circle as the edge. 
of that. And then we'll continue this line down toward the bottom of that big circle. There's the belly slightly bulging outward. And we'll stop there because we'll have to put the legs in. This little circle, this tiny circle I did here at the chest is where the arms would go. Okay? Tyrannosaurus had small arms relative to its body. So we're just going to, the shape is going to be kind of like this. Um, like an L kind of. Sorry, I, I kind of should have told you that this part here, whoops, I just did a big erase. <laughs> Uh, let me just adjust my eraser size. That's way too big. I can do that. I can change the size and shape of these things digitally. Um, so what I'm going to do is you can do this if you're using pencil. If not, that's okay because it's not a big deal. You can erase out a little bit of that line of the, of the belly. Make room. Notice what I did with the hand here. It's like I didn't have any fingers. That's because I'm going to add one little finger on top. And then one other finger, a little bigger. Tyrannosaurs were weird. The way it works, if you wanted to, to pretend you're a tyrannosaur, is you have to have your hands held with your palms close, uh, toward each other, like you're clapping. This is how they held their hands. And imagine that you have only a thumb and your index finger. All the rest of your fingers were, are gone. Tyrannosaurus had two fingers, right? And these are the two fingers, the, the kind of our thumb and our index finger that represent the ones that they had. So this shorter finger was the one that was ended up holding forward, pointing a little forward. And that's the one, the little one I've got pointing forward there. And the index finger is the one that, that is the slightly longer one that's pointing more downward. And so if you're a T-Rex, you're kind of holding almost like these kind of like pistol hands, but they're kind of bent a little bit like this. So that's how Tyrannosaurus' hands would kind of look. So that's why I've drawn this little longer finger at the back here and a little bit of a shorter finger in front. And it's holding its hands like that with its uh, palms together. Now, the hind legs are big. They've got massive muscles because these guys had an enormous weight to hold up and to move with these muscles. And new studies show that they could actually kind of like spin on a dime to, to turn on uh, when they were hunting. And so... Those big egg shapes we drew are going to be where the big muscles are. So we're going to start up here and draw kind of a, a slightly curvy line down toward the bottom of this top egg. And that's where the knee will be, okay? right here at the end of that, just where those two eggs meet. We're going to draw another line from the back of this egg, a little further out than the, the tip, and bring it down like this, again, toward where those two eggs meet. So we have some big muscles, uh, especially the huge thigh muscles. Then at the knee here, from the knee front, we're gonna go and pretty much follow this egg down to where it meets the lower egg. And same thing on the back of it. Gonna start here and this curves around big calf muscles uh, to help flex the, the ankles. And that lower sort of middle, that second smallest egg, that is the, um, the what would be in us, our foot. Uh, but they held, they stood on their, on their toes, basically. And their, their, their ankle was raised up above the ground, and they walked on their toes. So this here is what would be our foot. For them, it was off the ground. And there's, the ankle is back here. This comes down like that. And the foot is actually just some toes. So I'll just continue this to the bottom of that lower egg. And we can give it a couple of, of uh, claws at the bottom here. We can only see two of the, of the toes because the other one is behind the big middle long one. Just like that, it connects up. Okay, so that's the foot. Toes. But functions as our foot would in that sense. I'm going to just move my page over a little bit so that we can move toward the back of the animal. Now, that big... Uh, a uh, bent uh, pool noodle banana sort of thing. That's our tail, obviously. Tyrannosaurs and a lot of these two-legged carnivores had really big tails, massive tail muscles, bigger than a lot of the time they're shown to have had by, uh, by artists in the past, uh, or, or even a lot of them today. So one of the things that some of the scientists have found is that they had huge muscles in those tails. And so don't be afraid to give it a pretty nice thick tail. We're going to follow the edge of that line pretty much. 
I, I probably could have gone a little further. It can get a little skinnier and a little bit longer out there. Um, but well, I don't know, maybe it's got an injury. Uh, but anyway, we're going to make, we're going to kind of follow this. And instead of following it all, all the way up to where um, that, that tail got skinny at the top, we're going to kind of bridge it with that big circle. And the reason I do it this way is to show you again that these things had massive muscles here. I wanted to call attention to this because the back of the leg here, uh, where we drew this line, and it would connect, like the, the, the thigh uh, bone, the femur, would connect to uh, the tail by means of a big muscle here as well. And so some of what we're seeing here, this connection is a big muscle. So we, there's this bulge that comes out of the back of the legs. And in fact, this line isn't always as visible as a lot of the time it's shown in artwork. So you can, you know, it's fine here, but in the future, remember that that line isn't always a straight line down. Um, it helped us to build it, but a lot of the time there's a big muscle that helps that shows up here as a bulge. So, and also there's two layers of muscle in the tail. One great big mass of muscle. If you looked at this in cross section, if you kind of looked at the tail from end on, you would see there was this big mass of muscle on top and then a big mass of muscle underneath. And the spine goes between them kind of. And so you can see this with a little bit of a, there's an indentation along the tail. I'm gonna draw a little dotted line to show that. This on top, there's a big mass of muscle, a big bulge and the big bulge underneath. These are the two major sort of muscle groups, some of them anyway. And this bulge that we sh showed before is another big bulge of muscle. So there we go we have the makings of our Tyrannosaur. If you want, uh, like this, is, this shows that if it was standing and holding its arms and its legs exactly in line with each other, this is what we would see. Or if you want, you can use the same method you did to draw the leg. And let's say it's walking, so the other leg is behind it. I'm just gonna go quickly to show you. I've done this a lot before, and you can probably, and as you get practice, you can do these really much faster. Um, it's walking, so the other leg is behind it. And then here, you can even add like joints to the toes if you're you know, wanting to, um, to show how the toes bend, where it uh, flexes them as it's walking. You can add even a few wrinkles here and there. You can add some wrinkles um, to underneath, like where its uh, jaw meets the, the neck, because that would have a lot of skin that would want to be able to expand a lot because these things would swallow huge chunks of meat and bone, right? And so you need the throat to be able to expand out to allow that part of the meal to go down its throat. And so there's a lot of loose, probably loose skin here. You see that a lot in modern reptiles too. The one thing I didn't draw is the back end of the head. We can sort of draw a little light line from behind that big boss of bone uh, behind its eye to connect it with the bottom of the jaw. And one of the things, you know how dinosaurs' ears were? Because they didn't have any external ears like mammals, like we do, right? They didn't have any of these. They had a hole. Um, and you see that in a lot of modern reptiles as well. They would have had a hole that was at just behind the skull or just behind that, that line, that jaw, um, right around here. Just a hole. You kind of draw it kind of like an eye almost. Um, Oh, yeah, I forgot. This thing's got to breathe, right? So it's got a nostril. And the nostril is at the tip of the snout, about there. Draw a little dot there. So now we have our dinosaur. Um, because I can do this, I can remove the, um, that layer that I did the circles. You can erase that out, or you can leave it in if you drew it in lightly. But now you can see that it looks like a Tyrannosaurus. Um, we can... You know, this is kind of a rough one that I, I probably should, whoops, I probably should have made the snout a little bit thicker, but that's just details. You know, you can, you can do that on other ones. Technically, it maybe you should have been more like this, but no big deal. Anyway, it looks kind of like a Tyrannosaur. Um, and there are many different kinds of Tyrannosaurs. Uh, you know, they look a little different from each other, but this is kind of like a generic, typical Tyrannosaurus. But anyway, that's, that's one way to draw Tyrannosaurus. Many different ways to do it. Uh, 
one of the things that you got to remember if you if you're an artist that really helps uh, artists of all kinds, and we, we use this all the time when we're doing work professionally, when you're trying to copy something from nature, um, a lot of the time we try to we try to look at the whole thing, but the best thing to do is to try to break it down into simple shapes. So when you see uh, and that's why I wanted to start using these circles. When you see an animal's neck, maybe look to see if you can see shapes like triangles in it. Sometimes you can see, you can imagine lines that define parts of its body into simple shapes. And just try to draw those simple shapes and put it together from those simple sh shapes like a puzzle. When you do that, you'll find that um, you end up making a more realistic or accurate looking picture of what that looks like. Artists use this professionally all the time. And this is how a lot of artists do such a good job of, of, of making things look correct uh, because they break it down into smaller shapes and put th those together. Like even just mentally, even if you're not like drawing in the shapes, you can eventually get good enough to do it just in your mind to see the shape and then draw the lines by kind of imagining it on the page. Um, but it's good to practice like this first. So anyway, that's that's kind of a little drawing lesson. And you can apply this to anything else, basically, as well. Thank you so much. You're um, very welcome.